this panel is. It's in the bag. Outreach kits for your community. I feel like I need my radio announcer voice. So hello for those of you who are just tuning in. I'm Tyler Hahn. I'm here because I love to give presentations. Wink, wink. Um, you can talk to me at here's my um, email address. It's, you know, kind of like all of yours, Tyler at Cherokee.lib.ia.us. Or there's my Twitter handle. Um, I just got on Twitter and I find it amusing. And then yes, hi to everybody who's in chat. So our agenda for today is going to be analyze community need and interests to build a relevant collection, discover resources to construct your own outreach kits, and then learn about inventive ways to fund slash grow your own library of things. And this will sort of go in with my own journey with developing these resources for my community. Now, my resources might not necessarily look like what you're going to have for your library or what your community necessarily wants or needs. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. But if you see something in here, that you can go ahead and adapt or that you think that there will be a need for, I'd be more than happy to go ahead and share what I have for resources to go ahead and make that happen. So kind of like my little icebreaker question, what things, in quotation marks, do you circulate at your library? Are you one of the libraries that circulate cake pans? I know that's been really popular. Um, oh, we've got some chat going on. So we do puzzles, games, cake pans, cake pans and story kits. Kits, that's really awesome. We also do puzzles. I've run into one of the things though that um, if we're underneath X amount of pieces, we go ahead and number all of the pieces. But lately our puzzles have been kind of missing some pieces and things like that. So I think that we might need to go ahead and recess the sizes of puzzles that we go ahead and circulate or maybe find a different way. I mean, most of ours are donations, so I guess we're just out the time that it takes to go ahead and or, um, make or add it into the system. But yeah, board games and mobile hotspots, that is so cool. Hotspots are so important right now. I honestly wish that we had a, like a hotspot or something like that because I've seen so many of our patrons um, outside in their cars and kind of in our green space and in our vestibule area who are looking um, to using our Wi-Fi since we're not operating at all of our hours as of yet. And there's only so many things that you can go ahead and do without internet. It's especially important now where you need um, the internet to go ahead and check for information on this pandemic. You need the information to go ahead and, or you need internet to apply for unemployment um, benefits. You just, you need internet just to do your day-to-day -day things for school and things like that. It's really important. Puzzles, games, and making STEM backpacks right now and other book activity backpacks. That's really cool. So I hope that you might get some ideas, hoping to circulate STEM kits. Now, when I get to talking, most of my kits are STEM related. And I'll go ahead and explain the thought process and everything else around that. Um, we do have some ideas and we've gotten some suggestions from other libraries about what they would like to go ahead and see. So, or um, other patrons in like homeschool groups within our community about what they would like to go ahead and see going uh, forward. So flannel, story, steam kits, activity kits and puzzles, um, sport and park equipment. Now for a lot of you storing a lot of these different things, do you have an issue with storage or do you have a specific area in which you can go ahead and store them in your library? I'm just going to go ahead and wait here and chat. We're going to have a minute of that for awkward silence. That was one of the things that I had to go ahead and consider for our library is that uh, we chose a backpack format and I'll explain more about that, but it was sort of hard to go ahead and find shel um, space, um, shelf space or anything else. Um, especially since we're, our collection isn't that great, but we're, we're kind of in an older building with some, I'm going to say unique architectural challenges that we've kind of um, had to go ahead and overcome and be inventive. I know that like our outside walls are kind of like 
um, like octagon shape. So it's really hard getting shells to fit really flush against um, especially perimeter walls. So we've had to really be inventive where we go ahead and place um, shelving units within our library. And then also how we go ahead and present um, a regular shape, things like that, that we go ahead and circulate as well. But yeah, these are all really good. Um, also, we'll have hooks on our walls to hang up backpacks. That's actually what we do um, right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my next slide. So how do we know, or how do I know what my community is looking for? There's a couple of basic um, survey tools that you can, or um, feedback um, tools that you can go ahead and use. One of those is surveys. Just go ahead and ask your community what they would like to go ahead and see. Easy enough, you can go ahead and send that survey out to your homeschool groups. You can go ahead and send them out to your daycare groups, any group that frequents your library. I try and get their contact information, especially if you're already sending out a newsletter or something like that. Usually they're pretty good about talking back and giving that sort of feedback back and forth. Another good idea is a, fo um, a focus group. So my teen activity board or my team advisory board, my tab group, actually kind of works as my focus group and I kind of beta test new ideas with them and get new ideas from them as well. So if any of you have groups of teens or groups of parents who come for story time or things like that, a lot of our system. Okay. Uh, if you have any sort of groups like that, that you can go ahead and pull together and just sort of informally have that conversation, that's a really great idea to go ahead and do. Um, I've done that with teachers in the past where they're setting up for the new school year and everything moving into their classrooms. I will just go right in, set up with some of my business cards. I will also forward an email with a little Canva decorated like logo thing um, later on. But I will also kind of sort of congregate them together, kind of entice them with cookies or something else to like my area to figure out what they're going to be needing, maybe what their students are needing or they're saying that their students are asking for, but not might not necessarily be coming to the library for that resource or necessarily asking for that resource at, um, at the library or even considering that the library might have a green screen that they can go ahead and borrow to do some of their streaming on Twitch or want um, some podcast sound equipment, which are two things that we've sort of gone ahead and added into our, um, our library of things to go ahead and do. Talk back boards. I love talk back boards. Um, so I've talked about them at length um, before in um, um, I, ILOC, so the Iowa, Iowa Library Online Conference. I, I love that as an assessment method. So what a talk back board is, is, oh, we have another chat. So does your library offer Twitch access or does things on Twitch now? I've done a little bit with Twitch, to be honest, um, especially with our esports program, because it's one way to go ahead and get your, um, get your programming out to where kids and that demographic already is. So it's a good idea. Um, some of my, but some of my people want to go ahead and stre um, stream. So it's really cool to have like that green screen as a background where they can go ahead and do custom things and then create their own sort of content. And I'm all about learning however you want to learn when you want to learn it. But with the talk back boards. So a lot of times, if you don't know what it is, it's a question. And then you can just have a prompt back with, um, oh, as we might, okay, I'm just like, oh no, I'm like thinking there's something else going on. Anyway, talk back board. So it's a, a prompt or a question, and then you just have people go ahead and give quick feedback on it. it can be yes or no. I really like, especially for younger individuals as well, like um, happy face stickers or frowning face stickers. Um, do you necessarily, one of the things that I was doing earlier on when I was a librarian is story times. Do you like how I go ahead and conduct my story time? Are you going to give me a happy face or a frowning face? And then I could sort of go from there and figure out what were they liking? Were we being too active? Was I too off tangent? Were we not doing enough games? Was I picking out books that are too long? I could go ahead and further refine that with the parents to go ahead and see because whereas the parents might have loved it the kids coming might have just been like oh my gosh get me away from this man 
But anyhow, um, talkback boards are really great. One of my other suggestions is if you have any sort of handout or anything like that, like you're giving away food or snacks or something like that, I would go ahead and put the talkback board right there so they have to go ahead and see and interact. And usually when they're waiting for those snacks or things like that, it's something to go ahead and do and pass the time, especially for introverts who fear like eye contact or anything like that go ahead and like put it right there. That's a good way for them to go ahead and have their attention on something else without having to go ahead and do small talk. And then finally interviews. Um, I interview people all the time, even after I've implemented a program. So I talk to parents and educators and different groups all the time about what's good about our resources, what we can go ahead and change and then further refine it. Our, um, like our um, outreach kits right now weren't in their current, I don't know, iteration when we had launched them. I had a real bare bone sort of setup for them that it was nice because it was highly adaptable but yet it, it didn't quite provide all of the resources which some of my patrons had wanted and wanted to go ahead and see when selecting material like that. And I can tell you right now through all of this, um, we have, I believe, nine different backpacks that you can go ahead and choose from. I don't have a single one left right now because um, there's so many parents pandemic schooling and it's a beautiful resource to go ahead and have an entire curriculum that you can go ahead and add or subtract materials from to teach your kids about things. So here's what, so at the Cherokee Public Library, we chose a backpack specifically because um, I don't have a lot of shelf space, so I was thinking like those Sterlite containers would be awesome. They're, they're sturdy. You can drop them. You can do whatever you want to go ahead and do with them. I like that too. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, pandemic schooling. But, um, but yeah, um, we had a ton of homemade or like handmade um, coat hooks. There are so many coat hooks in this place. I didn't know what to do with them all, and they take up so much real estate. But yet they're like screwed in with um, like nails or screws that are as long as my arm and they're really terrible to take out and they wreck the wall so we decided to go ahead and lean into that and actually have our collection based over in that area for this library of things and this is what we go ahead and do we have a luggage tag right here that we just go ahead and put a barcode on um, barcode, um, the, like the luggage tags are really cheap at like Walmart or Target. You could even find them in like home improvement stores and things like that. This one just happens to be like a regular black one goes with the aesthetic of the backpack. Um, and these are a little bit sturdier as well. That was one of the things I was looking at. I was thinking at first just going ahead and laminating a barcode and doing like a zip tie or something on there. But I know that that might nest. Oh, Dollar Tree has them as well. But yeah, um, that kind of hits at it as well as kids feel important walking out with a backpack on. It was so nice to go ahead and have that as a resource where parents could go ahead and grab additional material and just put it in that backpack and just basically pick it up, go grab some of the other things that they want, things that they want as well, put it in the backpack and head right out to their car. It is really cool. It's kind of one of those um, novel concepts where that's, I know that that's what they're going to take back is going to the library and picking out a backpack of things to learn from for the week. Yep, the laminated card on a key ring works really well um, as well. But yeah, that's what I found, and I got these on clearance for like 50 cents. Uh, I think that they're steel. Same with backpacks. Any backpack that you can go ahead and find works great. So if you're doing different themed ones, say you're doing one on a farm and you find a llama backpack on like, wall, uh, like Walmart or something like that, just buy as many as you can. You can really suit, adapt them. They, they're, you know, I figure... We're out just a couple of bucks with the backpacks. I don't care what they look like if a strap gets ripped off or something like that. I know some kids are harder on backpacks and things like that. And thus far, we've had these for just about a year and a half now. I haven't had anything lost out of them or anything like that thus far. And some of these you'll see going forward have a lot of different pieces and moving parts in them as well. So yeah, this is what ours our, um, ours are. So it's just a regular backpack, barcode on the top loop, and then this loop is hanging on the coat rack. So I include a little curriculum packet with each of these. I um, made this in Canva. So I just picked like a random background and then um, 
I just looked for some different arts or um, art, just different pictures to go ahead and do the, like the bullet points. And then I just went from there. So we actually have a um, human body um, uh, backpack called Your Amazing Skeleton. So on the back, there's a little blurb about your body. And then there's a little bit of factoid and stuff for trivia. So originally we had a lot more in depth for writing curriculum, but I kind of went down the rabbit hole for standards for each grade. And that, that was awful. I've spent more time on iowacore.gov than I, than like any librarian should have. So I was trying to hit off of multiple different um, standards within each grade that I thought that these would go ahead and circulate to. And it was just too much information. People wanted to go ahead and be able to have something just to go ahead and look at and then um, adapt this to that. So that's where I went ahead with this. This backpack was actually funded by the American Society of Radiology Technicians. So the, um, believe it or not, there's actually a lot of grants and we'll talk about that later and different things that you can go ahead and do to fund STEM backpacks and other different types of outreach kits for your community as well. And then one of the things, the suggestions I have is go ahead and within that, go ahead and keep your papers minimal. This is a front and backside document that I just um, laminated. Just write what this backpack contains and try and keep things underneath five or six items in there. That way it is hard to go ahead and lose things. I know that some uh, parents that I talked to interviewing and surveying were a little bit worried that some of the small things within a couple of the different backpacks, for instance, our fossils backpack, were going to be far too easy to lose and that they stressed out a little bit. Chucking it out in the future might not necessarily be a good idea until their kids are older. So I just, on one side, I have, this one has a book, a packet of x-ray film, um, an anatomy puzzle, and then this packet. So it, and that makes it really easy for your circulation staff to go ahead and see that as well. Just quickly glance through, make sure everything's there, scan it back in, get it back on the hook in minimal time. It takes less time for us to go ahead and do this than it does sometimes, honestly, um, going through looking at puzzles or things like that, making sure that they're clean or um, all of the pieces and, excuse me, stuff are in. So this, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we've done thus far for our backpacks. Um, this, these are just guidelines from what I heard about different people um, wanting within our community as well. Yours don't have to look like this. If you have a really good local resource, use them, partner with them, use different businesses and organizations within your community to help you do your work. The more that you partner and the more that you go ahead and divvy up the work, the easier these are to do. And the, I honestly think they are higher quality with that as well. So I partnered with a natural history museum to go ahead and do my backpack on fossils. And you know what, it turned out really great. So within the um, fossils backpack, that was the black backpack we saw earlier, we had a curriculum packet. We had a 3D printed T-Rex. We have a 3D printer and I'm always finding ways to go ahead and justify using it other than making buttons and cookie cutters. I've made more cookie cutters than anybody should ever have to with a 3D printer. It also comes with a really cool set of fossils and a fossil activity within that curriculum packet that the um, Natural History Museum had given to me. They're just like, yeah, just go ahead and utilize that. This is what we do for our class. You have full permission to put this in your backpack and then a prehistoric and actual size book that goes with it. And some people I know are worried about circulating things like rocks and fossils. Really, you can find these online dirt cheap. But um, one of the things is actually processing those as well. So a little tip, if you're doing fossils or something like that, put a layer of clear um, nail polish down and then a layer of nail polish or of, of whiteout, I mean, and then another layer of clear nail polish after that all dries and you write and number your things. That it's an easy way and it stays, yes, pun intended. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm full of puns and yes, the dad jokes, but yes, this is a really easy way to go ahead and number just about anything that you have, um, uh, that you might be circulating. So just clear nail polish and white out. That, that it's, it's just brilliant. I really love it. I recommend it to anybody else who's looking to go ahead and circulate like rocks, minerals, things like that. 
especially if you want to have like your initials on something. So what are the ages for? So these can kind of vary. So when I was going off initially, I was thinking ages, so like first grade to third grade. I figured that this would be a good one for them. But you know what I was going through, I was really worried about standards. So that's how I focused the curriculum and everything. You can have this if you want to send this to a nursing home and go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and tailor this to anybody's needs. Have a suggested bibliography in the back for this or a if you want to learn further sort of resources pack for that. I That's how I've gone ahead and I've evolved with this and I've gone forward with it is I tried to go ahead and pack things within a tight demographic, but other people inevitably think this is really cool. I want something like this, but I don't necessarily have the resources to make um, a first through third grade um, fossils backpack, a fourth grade through sixth grade fossils backpack, um, etc. That's specifically tailored to them. However, I do have these like the raw material material, as well as books and resources within each area of my library. So I could definitely go ahead and give them that. So what's included in our curriculum sheet? So right now, a lot of it, it goes back to what I had in the um, human body one. I do a lot of factoids and things like that. That's what people were telling me that they wanted. They wanted material, but they didn't necessarily want it to feel like school. Um, so one of the things that's really big in my community, and it might be in your community as well, is trivia. So did you know this fact or something like that? I do a lot of that sort of stuff within, I'm a veteran homeschooler, so from experience, I suggest that you recruit some homeschooling families to make some of these for you. And that's a good idea as well. And it's great to go ahead and incorporate some of their resources in as well, as long as it's from a reputable source and, um, yeah, you don't have to worry about any of like the copyright and stuff like that. I would go ahead and ask um, our uh, law consultant with that for anything like that. But I used my homeschool group and I leaned heavily on what they wanted to go ahead and see. But yeah, so going with um, age groups for it, I just say, you know what, if you have like a grandma's home for the weekend or grandma's got the grandkids for the weekend, she has like an 11 year old and a six year old and a four year old want this, I will go ahead and give her the backpack. I will um, suggest some books for her to go ahead and use maybe some DVDs downstairs within our documentary section and they'll be good to go with the dinosaur adventure all weekend. So this is the human body pack. Um, as you saw earlier, that's what the um, curriculum packet looks like. I have the uh, material list on there. It has a neat little um, puzzle in there as well that's 26 pieces. Because the backs on this were magnetic, we weren't able to go ahead and number them like that without actually numbering and marking on the actual puzzle. Um, so we didn't mark that, but we figured 26 pieces. I talked with my circulation staff. They're like, that's nothing. We're good to go with it. And then we have this huge Illuminatomy um, booklet with it as well that has like, um, like 3D glasses in it that are really good. Um, so each page is like done in red, blue, and green. So you can see how different systems work and then interact with one another. And then we also have like the radiology film in there as well. That's really cool to go ahead and look at the different bones and tape and uh, like radiology tape and things like that. So I figure that one's kind of like my more college and career readiness one um, out of the backpacks that I have currently created. But this one's been really popular as well, especially within my homeschool base, because I was worried that the depiction of some of the pictures in there are kind of, I guess I would say, like naughty. I like there are, there's human like parts in there. And I was worried that my homeschool group would like have a fit about circulating this out. But I discovered within surveying and doing a focus group with them that they go ahead and have that talk rather young with their kids about the differences between boys and girls. And it was sort of one of those educating moments for me to go ahead and realize that it, they're not, they're not that far off from how regular school goes on with some of their regular conversations. But yep, I number pieces on bags. That's one of my tips for anything. Just number and document what's everywhere. That way it's easy for your patrons to go ahead and see and your staff to go ahead and see as well.
This is my favorite backpack. This is our insect backpack. So we feature bees, which we're in my bee cardigan today, and then butterflies in there as well. You'll also see a 3D printed bee puzzle that we went ahead and made with our 3D printer. Again, I have a 3D printer. I'm going to use it for anything that I possibly can. And then if we ever lose a piece or anything like that, I have the files right on my computer. I can print a new puzzle piece in about 25, 30 minutes. No time at all. We have a butterfly fly net as well to go ahead and encourage you to go outside and look around explore the tangible world and then we have these really cool they're called compound eye goggles you'll see them right there on the green butterfly net so they show you how compound eyes function and what the world looks like through compound eyes and i have so many awesome pictures that i've gotten from staff or not from staff but from patrons who have used these and had really awesome times and weekends with their grandchildren their children with their homeschool groups who have used these and had so much fun this one um we honestly had a wait list for about seven weeks for in order to get it back and we circulate these for a week at a time we considered three weeks at a time but it's we just don't have enough to in order to go ahead and go around so we figured we would um follow our like dvd circulation with like a week for regular dvds and then we just did national geographic readers they're cheap um you can get those for about like five bucks i would say probably maximum And then one of the things that I learned surveying my community as well is that they love owls. Like every little kid, I want to read owl diaries. I want this with owls, 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 owls everywhere. And I'm just like, I'm over it. I don't know what to do. So I just went ahead and leaned in with that. So um, this backpack, we have um, a curriculum packet. We actually had an old snowy owl puppet that I didn't really use for story time because it kind of freaks me out, but I don't do very many like owls, uh, like owl or nighttime uh, like story time themes. How do we keep the owl puppet clean? So I Lysol this thing like there's no tomorrow every time that it comes in. But I also haven't had to deal with any sort of mysterious stains or anything like that. Um, that's my suggestion for it. I, I think on the tag it says that you can go ahead and spot clean it. It hasn't come back like somebody's dog has eaten it or somebody's cat has tried to go ahead and eviscerate it. Um, if it does happen, I will go ahead and look at a different replacement, but it's something that we already had within the library that I wasn't utilizing. So yeah, I just go ahead and I liberally, like they make a um, Lysol fabric spray. I'm not sure your availability to find it necessarily right now, but that's what I use all the time. And I do that with all of our backpacks when they come back in as well that way, just in case they like might smell like car or McDonald's or something like that, that you don't have to go ahead and smell that and either be hungry or do you ever worry about lice or bed bugs? We somewhat, um, yeah, um, with the owl feathers, I, here's the thing with that, um, that's from our county conservation and things like that. So we went ahead and checked in with that. It should be okay since it's for educational purposes. We talked with our city attorney with that and that came, this was another partnership with our conservation office. They went ahead and wrote the curriculum packet for this. A lot of stuffies are also machine washable. Were you able to get rid of any, if you were going to get rid of it? What do you have left to lose? So yeah, that's sort of my thing. But yes, with the owl feathers and everything, that was one of my concerns as well. But it was already from a deceased animal and we had talked with our city attorney and the conservation office before we went ahead and put this in as well. And then um, these don't necessarily have to be STEM either. One of our um, popular kits is sort of like a pioneer or an Oregon Trail style kit that was one of the things that our homeschool group really focuses on and that it sort of brings back fond memories for some of our older patrons as well they like watching westerns and having that sort of thing going on but also interacting with it this one there is a lot more information in the curriculum packet and i'm still trying to figure out how to go ahead and whittle this down a bit because it's it's very talky we have like a journal this was another um 
uh, another collaboration with our um, Natural History Museum. Since they have a curriculum and a program already done on this, we went ahead and adapted, just sort of did the bare bones, kind of like Oregon Trail style game within the curriculum. Like if you were going to go, would you want like a pack horse or an ox to go ahead and lead your, um, like your, your caravan and then go from there with everything going on. Um, so it's kind of like a choose your own adventure and then it um, goes ahead and tells you why this is. Yeah, they do have a card game for the Oregon Trail. So if you wanted to go ahead and put that in there, that would be great to go ahead and do. This is just what we went ahead and did. Um, we also did a Jacob's Ladder and Lincoln Logs and those are a lot of fun. And then again, we sanitize those. Um, I just have a We the People Oregon Trail book that we were just looking at going ahead and weeding. Um, I'm looking for better material for that. So we'll go ahead and see, but this one's probably going to be changing. And then from there, soon to the collection, this, this isn't, um, this, we're, st we're still growing. We're still doing other things with this. Um, I had a patron pass away and she left a, a fair amount of money to the library to go ahead and continue on with this because this is one of the things that she liked to do with her grandkids and her great grandkids when they came to visit her at her house. So she wanted to go ahead and see this go forward and have more resources for this. So we have plans for astronomy with a desktop telescope. We have plans for snap circuits, um, snap atoms as well. That's one of the things that our homeschool group wants. They're working on chemistry and they like going ahead and doing the experiments, but sometimes it can go ahead and be cost prohibitive as well to go ahead and do that many times. And they want to go ahead and visualize what those molecules actually look like. And it's something that some of our teachers have said that they would like to go ahead and utilize in school as well. So we had also talked about an Eyclops magnifying lens as well as Spiros. However, I'm not sure what that's going to look like, to be honest, um, especially since some of that technology is dependent on having other technology. But one of the things that I found really interesting as well is um, we had a focus group with um, our teen group and uh, during our teen activ uh, activity board thing. They really like doing arts and crafts and things like that. And that's one of the main reasons that they come to the library, but they don't have that sort of material at home, um, especially with their younger siblings and things like that. So they had suggested that we go ahead and do like a traveling doll scrapbook or something like that, where when you check out the doll, it's sort of like a traveling flat Stanley thing. You go ahead and make a scrapbook page with that. You go ahead and give them the art supplies to go ahead and reload. So each one will have like X amount of pieces of construction paper, <clears throat> glue sticks, things like that. And then you can go ahead and send the pictures into us. We'll print them and then put them there or they can go ahead and print them themselves and decide how that actually looks. And then we'll go ahead and keep the um, scrapbook here in the library for other youth to go ahead and look through as well. What happens if a backpack is returned without all of the items? Do you charge the patron per item? That is our policy with that is if you lose something, you'll go ahead and do replacement costs. A lot of what you'll go ahead and see in here is like the binoculars. There wasn't really any price. Um, so we got those off of Oriental Trading. So that's a minimal price. I don't put a lot of high quality items in there. I'm not sure going forward with some of this, but we haven't lost any of the big stuff yet, but we would probably go ahead and charge for a comparable replacement cost or something like that. Same with a damaged backpack or something like that. If something like that happens, I'll just go ahead and move it to a different backpack. I have kids play with those types of kits in the library. What do you do if that happens with your kid? So that's one of the things that's happened here a couple of times as well. I've encouraged them to go ahead and move to like a separate area, like we have a play area. But if you don't necessarily have a larger library, it might be difficult that they go ahead and keep track of all of the material because I remind them that other people take these home and that they would be really disappointed if they didn't necessarily get to have that same experience because pieces were dropped on the floor. But I also, if somebody is doing that as well, I try and look and I have a little Excel spreadsheet on my own computer about when it's used in house as well, because that's something my board wasn't necessarily in favor for this at first. They worried that it was going to be a huge undertaking for me. It wouldn't be necessarily a wise investment for our resources and that, that they wouldn't go out or anything like that. So yep, you can always zip tie them 
let him go out and do that stuff as well. That's a really good idea actually as well. So we have each item's cost and charge for missing items. We also put zip ties on our backpacks to make sure that all items are there when they're checked out. That, and that's a really great idea. I would second that. That's a really great idea to go ahead and do. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just going forward with that, I'm not necessarily sure what your library will look like, what your needs will go ahead and be. But that's something that I honestly might look into um, going and doing now that we don't have to worry about maybe missing something or anything like that. And then I will also say that we had received some of the PBS backpacks as well, and those circulate really well as well. And that was sort of kind of like my template for going ahead and doing things like this. So this goes on for how do I go, uh, how do I find funding for my own kids? So um, you can look within your community for grants. Um, what, um, so Becky Heil had a really good grant program on yesterday that I really recommend that you watch that teaches. Um, so the PBS backpacks, PBS has this really cool outreach stuff. So in there they have um, like books and um, DVDs featuring um, PBS programming. So we have um, three different ones. One's on roller coasters. It has a roller coaster game in it. That's really amazing. Um, there's a lot of pieces in there, though, and a lot of different colored pieces. Um, no, we did not purchase these from or purchase those from PBS. They just were like Santa Claus one day. I had a phone call. They're like, hey, we know you're doing this. Do you want some of our, you know, like our STEM backpacks to add to your collection? I'm like, sure, that would be awesome. So we just went ahead and did that and it had everything already in there. But yeah, they're really great. I would um, recommend going online. Um, I haven't had to replace anything from the PBS backpacks, I couldn't say. But yeah, Becky's um, Get That Grant session was recorded. Um, it is awesome. It was an amazing resource, especially with the foundation directory online. So I didn't know that only 130 something libraries have um, have like requested access to that as of right now. There's like 13,000 grants for small libraries right in there. I'm just like, whoa, there's so many different ways that you can go ahead and look for funding for something like this that'll help serve your community. Um, one of our things is donations. So I'm growing mine with donations. Oh, but circling back to grants, um, look within your community as well. I've received funding from Casey's. So they help fund our summer reading program, but occasionally they'll go ahead and throw like $500 to $1,000 at you for cash. Walmart has a Walmart Community Foundation grant. That's rather simple to go ahead and actually apply for. Um, I did that for my esports program, and they gave me like $700 to go ahead and buy a Nintendo Switch and video games and controllers and things like that. And I didn't have anything other than sitting there smiling with a giant check and then going on my merry way with, you know, to buy my Nintendo Switch. Um, but there are a lot of different organizations within your own community that you can go ahead and look to for funding or to help you actually make these yourself. So that's one of my biggest recommendations is team up with your county conservation, team up with 4-H, team up with any museums, team up with anybody, like even a private business, if they have materials and stuff, like you have a furniture store, that would be really cool. If you have a tattoo parlor, maybe they'll go ahead and draw original things for you to go ahead and color. Just go ahead and ask it, it never go it never hurts to go ahead and actually ask with that the worst thing is that they'll go ahead and tell you no and then you just move on and ask somebody else um make your own that's one of the things that we really went ahead and did um it's not as re it doesn't have to be that hard you can go ahead and do whatever you want to go ahead and do with it have have it fit however you want your um, community's vision and then your library's vision as well for how you're going to go ahead and um, serve your community and then another resource which all Iowa libraries have access to our stem scale up awards now the application period for this has just closed but the pint size science kits that you're awarded really lend in nicely to being some sort of circulating STEM kit. And I really like them. So we had been awarded a kit, um, like a STEM scale up award last year. And it ended up being like $2,600 worth of material that we received for free. We just had to go ahead and document like all grants, what we were doing, who we were serving and things like that. 
for our once yearly assessment, but I went to training that was um, put on by like the Science Center of Iowa, got $120 stipend for my library to go to this training, which it would make great CE credits for any of you who are youth services librarians. And then they were all about just letting you go ahead and explore how to go ahead and implement this within your own community. So I did, I have a Science Saturday program the first Saturday of every month that's for like the pre-K crowd, just kind of come and go science experiments that's really touchy-feely, everything's safe. But then from there, I'm like, well, now that I've already done these, a lot of this material would really circulate, really translate well into making a backpack out of it because they come with the books, they come with the materials, they come with the tips how to go ahead and implement this into a curriculum, and they come with the tangible things to go ahead and manipulate that I've been already doing. They just do it better because that's what they do. They work, you know, they've developed these programs and kits over the years. So do you, I don't believe so. They might have something that's equivalent, but this is from the Iowa Governor's STEM Council that goes ahead and awards these. Um, you could definitely go ahead and try, see what your state's STEM initiative is. But I think that you could also ask one of the STEM consultants about what's in each kit and then go ahead and purchase them yourself or find grant money. Because a lot of times when you're writing a grant, you're going to want a specific list of what you're going to be spending the money on. And if they can give you a supply list of everything that's there, you just have to go ahead and basically copy paste, slap that in, tally it up, and then you're good to go with the exception of outcomes and assessments and things like that. And then, yep, we also got, and see, we did lights and shadows as well. I'm not sure how well that one's going to go ahead and lend to a STEM backpack. That's one that I've been interested in. I've kind of, I've kind of meditated and percolated on it a little bit to go ahead and see what I would circulate out of that kit. But that one's been one that I've leaned in heavily for doing like shadow puppet um, story times and things like that and other sort of one-off programs. But I definitely think that the pint size science um, kits or award is best for doing something like a like a circulating outreach kit and I know that they're looking at um, other ways that the STEM Council can go ahead and do outreach with libraries because they they don't receive very many um, applications from librarians most of these come from schools which it's great but you know what we serve so much uh, so many more people and the homeschool demographics growing there's, you know, we, we serve other people and I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, a lot of learning doesn't necessarily happen in school. We can go ahead and facilitate that, learn that, um, that learn, play through learning and stuff like that while we're all at home and um, circulating that sort of material. And especially right now with so many people pandemic schooling, that's why our kits are so popular is that they're a grab and go resource that they can go ahead and request that, request a few more books depending on their student's age. And then they can go ahead and have an activity to go ahead and do through the week. Do you do any kits for adults and teens? Teens, my teens at least have been more interested in having sort of a digital presence. So my main teen program at my um, library is an esports program to where we have a Discord server, we do Twitch, we, we have a group chat and everything like that that we can go ahead and moderate. But that's what they're interested in. That's what their passion is in. So I've had it to where they can go ahead and create an online portfolio. Most of them have access to devices and resources to go ahead and see with their interests but I'm also hoping that with us scaling up our kits and our outreach, that we can go ahead and get some of those things like the Snap Atoms and like the Desktop Telescope, where they can go ahead and explore other interests that aren't necessarily within that digital sphere. And then that's kind of the end of this. I figured I would have some time for like questions and answers just in case anybody was meek and didn't want to go ahead and ask anything during the actual presentation. I know there's sometimes where I'm like, whoa, there's so much information going on. I just need to go ahead and step back and like write down everything and then yeah, just sort of tie that all in. So yeah, if you have any questions or want access to any of my resources, feel free to go ahead and um, email me at me at Twitter. Um,
you Call kept up well with the questions, agree. Tyler. So I didn't even need to run anything down. But Teresa yeah, just asked you. one that may have slipped past with all the thank yous coming in. She asks, do you do literature and activities backpacks? That's something I've wanted to go ahead and do, but I'm not sure what that would um, look like necessarily. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Bloop. There we go. Anyhow, because I, at least within my community, I have some really picky readers where it's hard to necessarily get them check out like a book. I'm like, they want something that reads like Junie B. Jones, but they don't want X, Y, or Z, or the cover doesn't look interesting or something like that. They can be a little bit finicky. So I have some stuff like that that's planned. Like I had a book club discussion on my side of the mountain where I had all of these activity packs and everything else. And I have multiple copies of that, like a book club in a bag kind of thing, except it's not in a bag. I just put it in a grocery bag and tell you have at it. But that's something that my community really hasn't wanted. I'd be really interested to see what that looks like in a library or how you would go ahead and adapt with that. I think that it's a lovely resource to go ahead and have for your community. Yeah, and as you said earlier, it's all about knowing your community and any kind of programming or resources that you offer. And just because something is successful done in a certain way at one library is no guarantee it will be successful done the identical way at your library. So the first step, as you rightly pointed out, Tyler, is to get to know your community and what they need. Yes, indeed. And I haven't seen any other questions. I think uh, we have a few minutes. Tyler, I have to ask one that maybe some others are wondering. Totally unrelated, but can you explain what's behind you? Yeah, so this is one of the murals that we have done in our library. So okay. I figured I was going to, so we have so many different things going on, but yeah, looking up, it's just well, that's pretty cool. Giant. So usually if I'm sitting away, this is kind of like one of our reading nook areas. So I have okay. some books over here. Yeah, it's great background. By, yeah, I have like some neat billing chairs and stuff going on, but I have really good Wi-Fi signal here as well. So I've just kind of been chilling here today. And uh, Somebody wants to know if you can just pop your... Uh contact information out here again. And yeah, I'll go ahead and type it in chat real while quick. While you're doing that, uh, Emily comments that their middle school teachers request multiple copies of nonfiction books. So she's thinking that this might be a good kit to have for teachers. Yeah, definitely. And at least within my community, you don't necessarily, especially with the curriculum kit, you don't have to go all the way in looking at standards. I, I have never been more miserable in my life for any right. of you who are teachers. Um, I Kudos to you or had, had done that in the past. I can't write curriculum. There's just so many things. I am on Instagram as a matter of fact, but yes, that's mostly just... You know, the idea about having these for teachers with multiple copies, that might be when you opt to go with tubs, totes, instead of a, a backpack format. And you yeah, have and the tote the that has the multiple copies of books and then some of the accompanying resources. Yeah, and that's something that you guys do at the State Library as well with your book club kits, is they come in a really nice big tote. Suggestions for a kickoff. Someone's hoping to start STEM, um, hopefully in the summer or shortly thereafter. So what kind of kickoff might you recommend for this? So I would go ahead, kickoff, you could definitely do it on like social media, um, something like that. But if you were looking for subjects, I would definitely see what what your community wants, maybe what some of your parents are looking for as well, some of the grandparents as well. Um, I, yeah, but I would just definitely have a lot of fun with it. We, so my director is Zach. Um, he's just as, if not more zany than I am, which it's a dangerous combination when we have to go ahead and actually be productive, but we have a lot of fun on our Facebook page and doing videos and live streams and things like that as well. And that's sort of one of the ways that we make ourselves relatable as well is that we just go ahead I know and Zach is leaving so I'm kind of sad I'm not sure who I'm going to have for a director next but I hope that they deal with my spastic nature <laughs> I'm just going to mention somebody um, they were talking earlier in the chat about using the zip ties on the backpacks and when I was a director we had backpacks too and we did use the zip ties and they were a lifesaver because otherwise we did have kids who were so excited about them, they'd rip into them and start dragging stuff out in the library. So 
the only other option was to keep them behind the counter, but then they didn't circulate because people didn't know what they have. But I have to say one of the libraries in my district, um, Prairie City, I'll just call them out here. They have kits and I can't remember what they call them. They have a special name for them, but it's a teeny tiny library as far as facilities. And so they don't have the space to put their backpacks out on display. So they have a, a board that has all the different kit ideas with a picture of what's inside included on them. Um, so that may be an option if you are extremely limited or on space or uh, somebody has concerns about leaving the backpacks out um, in a public area for too long. But the, there, it's a good size photo of each of the kits. So we don't put it on a little bitty, you know, 10 kits on an 8 by 10 card or something like that. Make sure it's really visible. Yeah. And that's, and I don't claim to be an expert at this. This is just what we've done and it's been really successful. Mm -hmm. So I hope any of you, like I learned some new things today with the zip ties where I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and mm -hmm. as soon as I can go ahead and get into bomb guards or something, um, get some zip ties yeah. so that way we don't have to go ahead and worry. And this is an idea too that I think transitions well to any size library because yeah. I just mentioned that tiny library, they have such a small space, but they're doing something like this. And mid-sized libraries can do it, big libraries can do it. It's, it's easy to uh, convert to whatever size library you have and whatever the needs of your community might be. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's, that's one of the great things about Iowa libraries as well is that we have such great staff who are highly adaptable and highly resourceful at making their, their space the best space. They're, you know, sometimes second and in, um, increasingly, or third space and increasingly second space mm -hmm. for their patrons. Right. Uh, Don is talking about the STEM council person. Um, so uh, she's giving the contact for Southwest, but if you just do a, uh, an online search for Iowa STEM council, you should get the information that you need for all of those areas. I think they also have six regions. I think they call them regions, yep. um, but they, they're different than the districts that we, the six districts that the state library has. There's some overlap, but there's also some that's different. Um, so you'll need to not assume that just because you're in, for example, central district in the state library's districts, that it's the same district uh, name in STEM. It is yep. different. And I would really like to see more libraries utilize that as a program I would too. as well. Yeah. Um, it's a fantastic resource. Mm -hmm. It That's is. That's what I got on the STEM Gem poster. I went and, are we still recording? Yeah, we're still recording. But anyway, I had a really good conversation with Mary Trent, our regional STEM manager, one of those, um, at one of those trainings. And, you know, we got talking about memes and just, yeah, me being myself and talking about some of the different things we were doing at our library. And one thing led to another. And then, yeah, now I'm on, yeah, posters everywhere. And it's just, it's weird. But yeah, it's been so much fun. Yep, Cherokee PL on Instagram. So yep, like right now we have um, our, our 3D printer stuff going. And that's kind of been one of our things. But yeah, we do a lot of different stuff. Our Instagram geared more towards our young adult and like teen slash tween people. We've done some with Instagram as well, or not Instagram with Snapchat as well, but I don't like Snapchat as a platform personally, because I'm always weary about somebody sending us something that they shouldn't be sending us. And then like having to go ahead and contact the authorities or bring it up to somebody else and be like, I don't know what to do with this. And then then be like, well, you wanted it, you figured it out. But anyway, with that, that's one of those things where risk um, reward, but I try and meet our patrons where they already are. So especially within like our esports demographic and stuff like that, that's gotten wildly popular for us. So anything that you want to go ahead and do, um, yeah, if you just want a soundboard to just bounce ideas off, I'm always for that as well. Feel free to email me. 